Hey folks, it's a while since I last took a look at the interesting stuff TI users can do with speech on this talking computer of ours. But I've been getting my synth on quite a bit lately behind the scenes, and when all's said and done here, I've got a new synth experiment to show you. First though, instead of just telling you how I went about making that, I'm going to cast a way, way wider net and talk about all of the best tools we got for making a TI talk from 1979 up to now. While also looking at some of the cool creations they made possible. Little darling, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Little darling, it feels like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun. This is really a story that begins even before the TI-99 itself. Given TI was leading the charge on speech chips even before they debuted their home computer. And I know I wasn't the only one who, along with the TI-99, had TI's other speech toys as a kid too. Like the Speak and Spell and the Magic Wand Reader. So I guess it was inevitable that when I grew up I'd want to seize the power of TI speech for myself and make my TI-99 talk any bizarre way it could. Whee! Given the success TI was having with speech tech, making speech a selling point for the TI home computer just made sense. With TI's first promo materials for the 99.4, putting speech front and center as a highlight of the system. And just emphasizing how big a focus there was on speech, the first software TI sold home users to expand the TI-99's programming possibilities wasn't Extended Basic or Editor Assembler. It was Speech Editor, a dedicated cart adding speech to TI Basic. None of the first-gen TI software released before Speech Editor actually supported speech. So, at the outset, without Speech Editor, your $150 solid-state speech synthesizer was basically just a shiny little box whose purpose was to look kinda snazzy sitting next to a TI-99. And even with Speech Editor, we were still a ways off from what we'd learn was possible in the long run with TI's speech deck. We would be warm below the storm in our little hideaway beneath the waves resting our head on the seabed Still, Speech Editor meant you could start to mess around with the sounds of TI speech. So as the first option we got on the TI-99 in this area, I figure it does make sense to look at it first year today. If you start up your TI-99 with Speech Editor plugged in, you'll have two options available. And one is like you'd expect, a TI basic with a couple new tools for making your programs talk back. But the other one is the speech editor itself, where you can edit speech or just play around with it. Speech editor lets you use the synthesizer's built-in vocabulary I am a computer. But only the built-in vocabulary. Which means this is a place to mess around finding out how to use those words as well as you can. Which could mean combining words to make new ones. One inch apart. And it'll also mean using separators to time speech more naturally. Almost. Try again. Then, when you've got some speech you're happy with, you can take it back to TI Basic where more options are on offer. Though, the simplest one is just taking that string and feeding it to call say. Almost. Try again. And while that's the obvious use for call say, the other thing call say can do is arguably a lot more interesting. It can also speak binary LPC samples even beyond the built-in vocabulary. So if you've got a way to make a new speech pattern or modify one, TI Basic can say it. Please no. And it just so happens the spget command, which is the other tool speech editor gives you, can kind of get you halfway there. 
because what spget does is it fetches the binary LPC pattern for a speech word, so you can work with that directly. One good strategy here is truncating these speech patterns with the seg command. So you can grab the pattern for nice try and speak exactly the first half of it so that you get this. Nice, nice, nice. Which is a word that isn't in the vocabulary on its own. Though, fair warning, that doesn't work as well the other way around, chopping the beginning off a sample. The main reason being LPC speech frames hugely vary in length from 4 bits to 50 bits. So the odds of landing on the start of a frame if you just start somewhere in the middle are pretty slim. But grabbing the start of a sample and using that has no such issues. You'll probably have some garbage data at the end, and the final stop code will be missing. But the result still usually plays just fine. Texas, 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 Texas. So Colse can speak built-in vocabulary words, or it can even speak new LPC samples you've made or modified. And TI made use of both those options right away. For example, in their 1980 Super Star Trek game, TI Trek, which uses about a 50-50 mix of default patterns and new patterns with the Star Trek flair. Ready to start? Captain, I must set up each quadrant randomly first. And that's how Speech Editor and TI Basic got things started, putting speech tools in the hands of TI-99 users. But there's more than one way to code on a TI-99, and there are a few more ways to code speech on a TI-99 too. A less obvious one being UCSD Pascal and the P-System. The P-System was a full-on disk operating system whose main unique feature on the TI was the ability to write, debug, compile, and run programs in Pascal, which tends to be a fair bit faster than TI Basic, and more feature-rich besides. Especially given TI features like sprites and sound are supported by included libraries. As of course, is TI Speech Synth. I am a computer. So P-System speech support means speech development in a more powerful, structured language, thanks to UCSD Pascal. But it actually means even more than that, since Pascal isn't the only language supported by the P-System. There's also TI Pilot, which is a P-code program too. And if you've never heard of TI Pilot, well, it's an odd little language you probably don't need in your TI tool belt. But speech is a core feature. So, yes indeed, TI Pilot is one more way to get your TI-99 talking. Hello. But taking a step back from the oddball options, in the direction of the ones you probably actually want to use, TI Extended Basic is tops in that category, as the most popular development tool on the TI-99 period. Speech Editor's time as the top TI synth tool was pretty short in the end, Given Extended Basic came out in late 81 with its own version of Call Say and Call SP Get. I am a TI computer. And with all the other luxuries of XP alongside them. Sprites, better, faster graphics routines, and all the features it adds are just too good to pass up. So while Speech Editor is fine if all you want to do is make a TI-99 talk, XB can do a lot more for anyone looking to use speech in a program with more than just speech going on. In particular, XB's Fire and Forget Auto Motion sprites make a great pairing with speech, since you can use speech without disrupting sprite motion at all. One, two, three, four, five. And if you use spget to prefetch speech patterns, you'll see how speech commands execute almost instantly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, performance and feature-wise, XB beats basic every time, especially if you're trying anything complicated as far as manipulating speech patterns goes. And the extended basic manual even devotes a section to giving you a taste of how you can build new speech patterns in XB, by providing an example program of a solution for adding suffixes to words. 
So, hacking together new speech patterns was at this point very much intended functionality. But that business of hacking together new samples from built-in patterns, while it does have its uses, is a bit slow and kludgy. So, lucky for us, TI added something more powerful to its speech tools around the same time. Namely, Terminal Emulator 2. Which is a cart whose least interesting feature is arguably the one it's named after. Because nice and necessary as terminal programs are, the system already had one of those, whereas it very much didn't have speech tools like the ones in TE2 which really transformed what TI-99 synth could do. Slow down you move too fast you not to make the morning less just kicking down the cobblestones looking for fun and feeling groovy. And TE2's contribution really comes in two parts. The first is adding text to speech to TI Basic. So you can now feed Basic any words at all. Meaning for example, it was now possible to play TI's TI Trek as a cassette basic game, without needing to read speech patterns from disc. The Klingons say you will play. So at this point, you've got a text-to-speech engine that gets pronunciations right most of the time. But even when it doesn't get them quite right, Red alert, Klingons in quadrant. You can pretty much always re-spell a word to get the pronunciation you want. The best thing about Terminal Emulator 2 for me, though, is the way it lets you control pitch. Which is a feature Trio Plus Software took advantage of with their TI Sings disc. Trio Plus Software presents TI Sings. And which I've had lots of fun with myself like in the Terminal Emulator 2 version of Portal's Still Alive, I called Still T.I. I'm not even angry. I'm being so sincere right now. Even though you left me for a PC, and sold me on eBay, and shipped every piece to God knows where, and they sold it hurt because I was so happy for you. The only caveat here is that, like Speech Editor, TE2 adds those features to TI Console Basic, not XB. So, unless you like programming in TI Console Basic as much as I do, that'll probably be a downside. Though, lucky for you if that's the case, it is a solvable one. And that's all thanks to TI's text-to-speech disk. The text-to-speech package got almost no distribution at the time, so it's always been a rarity, but happily I've gotten my hands on one, and naturally anyone can download it today. So the link is in the description as always if you need it. With the text-to-speech disk you've got Terminal Emulator 2 style text-to-speech in Extended Basic, and you've also got the other half of the TE2 speech equation, Allophone Speech which is the library of 125 English speech sounds you can combine any way you please to create words. For my purposes, I ended up ditching text-to-speech per se pretty quickly, and just writing speech using allophones themselves instead. Which, being byte values in the 1 to 125 range, after all, are mostly characters you can just type right in. Pixel so speech written as a string of those allophones has been how most of my own speech projects took shape. And how things eventually went right off the rails with the likes of my speech synthesizer duet, where two TI-99 sing Scarborough Fair in harmony. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, say it's rosemary and thyme. Remember me to one who lives there. She once was a true love of mine. And while I'd talked about how the speed of XB is an advantage here, another huge one is XB support for assembly subroutines which lets XB use not just the text-to-speech routines, 
but any other routines you can find space for in memory. So in my case, when I took another go at my still TI demo, I used not just the speech disk, but TADXP's 80 column routines too. I just find it pretty hard to turn down extra columns, given the opportunity. So T40XB and T80XB, with their 40 and 80 column modes, have a habit of worming their way into my projects. And likewise, T40XB was in the mix for my TI Composer program. My own shot at making a native graphical interface for building TI speech songs. Why do we even come here? I guess we'll never know. It's like a kind of torture to have to watch the show. So the text-to-speech disc kind of blew wide open what you can do with speech on the synthesizer. Letting it say just about anything, at any pitch or contour. And pitch and contour can be given directly to the speak routine as numeric arguments. So anytime you use speech, picking a pitch is as simple as writing a number. But that all having said, there are still things Terminal Emulator 2 can't do, and furthermore, even the text-to-speech disk can't. One of those being, it can't give you control over the speed of speech. So, if you listen to my version of Video Killed the Radio Star here, You'll hear how some syllables are simply longer than others. When I'd rather they were all exactly the same length. The only solution to that problem is digging even deeper into the binary samples themselves and their internal data. And there are actually tools that'll do that, too, if you feel like going neck deep in LPC. And I should know, since I made one myself a few years back. You can see here in my editor, each speech frame in a sample has its own pitch and energy. So you can modify those any way you please for any given pitch pattern. Which is how, for example, I generated this sample. Yay! If you'd like to get into binary editing of LPC speech on the TI-99 itself, incidentally, Speedcoder is going to be the tool you want. And you can find that linked in the description. So the upside with binary editing is total freedom, where you can set energy and pitch freely for every single frame, and change the intonation of a word or phrase, however you like. Like taking this sample... That is incorrect. And tweaking the pitch a bit, so we get something a bit different. That is incorrect! But all the simplicity of text-to-speech, where you just type in a word and see if it says it correctly, goes away. And creating entirely new samples by hand is quite tough. But that's why in the present day, and for most everyday purposes, we have more complete and user-friendly conversion tools. And Blue Wizard was the first contemporary tool to manage good usable TILPC conversion when it came out in 2017. Before Blue Wizard, there had been a couple very old legacy tools, but Blue Wizard brought TILPC tech to modern computers. And it works beautifully. It lets you take speech samples in WAV format, convert them to TILPC, and preview them immediately. Which was a massive ease of use revolution. Warp Factor 1. Warp Factor 1. I used it in my own update to TI's 1980 Super Star Trek clone, TI Trek. <laughs> Where all the original samples from the built-in vocabulary were replaced with actual samples from the Star Trek TV show. Now unfortunately, Blue Wizard was built for Mac and Mac alone. So if you need a tool for Linux or Windows, you might want to check out Python Wizard instead. 
which is a command line port running like you'd expect via Python. But with all those options on offer, what are we still missing? Well, one thing I'd really like to see in the future at TI Synth is some further work on speech routines for the Milton Bradley MBX. Since the MBX was home to some of the best synth on the TI-99. Oh, no! oh yeah! A man can dream. And after all, a lot of TI-99 dreams have come true over the past decade. So maybe the MBX will be the next nut we crack. Could well be. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this look at the options we have for making speech happen and making speech interesting on the TI-99. Our tool set is better than ever today. Now, as promised, I'm going to close by showing you my new synth experiment, combining two of my favorite things, TI Tech and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But what I really mean by that is... I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Micro certain cried the day the one us died in the mash's treatment room. And now Tyler was there fighting the grizzly bear. Munchman mapped the tunnels of doom. Then something went wrong on stage one on Key Kong. They got caught in a demon attack. But then after a while, we returned to Pirate Isle. Our Spadger team was winging it back. Starship Parsec, our protector. The Moon Patrol will save the sector. Shamus Shin, some TI invaders. Slime is run from the Rotor Raiders. Oh, 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 oh. At the Summer Consumer Electronics Show, I want to go oh, oh. to the Summer Consumer Electronics Show in Chicago. Oh, oh. To the Summer Consumer Electronics Show. <laughs>